Welcome to the fourth and final presentation entitled Life's All About Choices. This says be miserable or motivate yourself, whatever has to be done, it's always your choice. So the goals for this particular presentation are that you identify a circuit as wired in parallel and that you conceptually describe the resistance of resistors in parallel. So here's what we already know. We already know that circuits require a complete path. We've already talked about series circuits and how they have a single path for charge to flow through. And we also know that series circuits have one path for multiple resistors. Now, what we have, what we learned in the lab is that whenever you add resistors in parallel, it doesn't make the bulb dimmer. Instead, it makes the bulb brighter. Now, the brighter the bulb, the greater the power. So what we saw in the lab is you have an increase in the power as you put resistors in parallel. Now, parallel is a combination in which there are multiple pathways for the charge to flow. In each one of these cases, you see I can go this way, this way, or this way. Because there are three different pathways, uh, the charge can actually choose which path to go through. Now, it doesn't actually choose. It takes what we call the path of least resistance. It takes the path of least resistance. So if I start here, I can go this way, this way, or this way, and there are three different paths for me to make it to the other end of the battery. Now, a parallel circuit actually increases the amount of charge that can flow through a circuit because it's like adding multiple different roads. Cars move at different speeds, but they're all going the same place. So because I have multiple different ways to get from where I started to where I want to go, there's an overall a faster way for the traffic to go. So since traffic can go faster, you have a brighter bulb. In addition to that, if there's a break in one particular or an accident here, you can just go around the other way and the bulbs will still work. So a parallel connection is really useful because if one resistor goes out, the other stay on. That's really helpful whenever you have something like an outlet or a switch. You wouldn't want to be in a house in which everything in the house either had to be on or off. That's the way that series circuits work. It's either on or it's off the whole thing. So if you flip your light switch on, your oven comes on, your TV comes on, the fan comes on, your air conditioner comes on, everything comes on because everything in a series circuit is on or off. Because parallel has multiple independent pathways, you can turn this one off and leave the other two functioning. That's why you have these things right here, outlets. They're wired in parallel. Because they're wired in parallel, you can plug something into this one and have it function and not use that one at all. In a parallel circuit, there is are multiple, multiple complete paths for the charge to reach the terminal. Now, identify any resistors that are wired in parallel. We looked at this example in the previous one, and we said there's a resistor right here, a resistor right here, a resistor right here, and a resistor right here. This point right here is called a junction. The reason why it's called a junction is that is a point where charge has a choice. Charge can either go down this bottom pathway, to the middle pathway, or to the top pathway. Because there are three different pathways for these things to all get to the same location, these three circuits are, or these three resistors are said to be wired in parallel. It says draw a circuit schematic for three resistors wired in parallel to a voltage source. So I have my voltage source and I have my circuit. And what I have is resistor number one, resistor number two, and resistor number three. Those are said to be wired in parallel because when I get to this point, I'm at a junction. I can choose which path to go and then they recombine on the other end. What happens to the resistance as resistors are added in parallel? So as you add resistors in parallel, the resistance actually decreases because it's like adding another lane to a highway. When you add another lane to a highway, there's another path for cars to take. So there's less likelihood that there will be traffic. Now, whenever we say that the charts is a choice, it actually it's actually not that simple. We'll take the path of least resistance. Whenever it does that, 
it's really important that we start to look at this. This is a power strip that you have. Whenever you plug a power strip into a wall, remember we've already talked about the wall. The wall provides 120 volts. When you plug a power strip into the wall, it is really important that each one of these outlets provides the same thing you would get as if you plugged it into the wall. And it does, because this is said to be wired in parallel. Whenever something is wired in parallel, the voltage is the same in each branch. And it does not split up the voltage. So because there's 9 volts and there are 3 branches, it means that it is 9 volts in each one of those branches. That is a big problem for a lot of people. They try and take the voltage and they try and divide it amongst the 3 branches. That is not the case. The 9 volts goes in each branch. Okay, Because you have resistors in parallel, there's alternative pathways the total resistance decreases. Okay, You have the voltage ends up being the same in each branch, but by combining these things in parallel you have a decrease in resistance. So it says how are the resistors wired? They are wired in parallel because I have this junction right here where I have a choice under which path I go. Now it says the resistance of the circuit must be blank 5 ohms. Because I have two resistors that are wired in parallel, the resistance has to be less than any of the original values. So if this was 5 and this was 500, the resistance would have to be less than the least resistor value. Where can the circuit be broken and both light bulbs go out? If I were to break the circuit right here, the charge would still be able to flow this way to the other end of the battery. Because of that, I can't break the circuit anywhere where there's a parallel combination. I have to break it somewhere else. I could break it here or I can break it here, but I cannot break it where there's a where there's a parallel connection and have both bulbs go out. <clears throat> this is a string of Christmas lights are wired in parallel, a single bulb burns out. What happens to the rest? Because there's an alternative pathway, because there's an alternative pathway, all the other bulbs remain lit. Okay. Voltage in parallel we've already discussed. This is wires in parallel have the same voltage, uh, and the voltage drop is the same in each branch. So in other words, because I have 9 volts here, I have 9 volts here, 9 volts here, and 9 volts here, all of them have to be 0 at the end because the other end of the battery has to be 0. So because of that, each one of these plugs provides 120 volts, not 20 volts each. In dividing the 120 volts up. That is not the case. It's 120 volts each. Because of that, I can actually use Ohm's law. When you use Ohm's law, you can say, okay, well, I have 9 volts in this branch, and I have 9 volts in this branch. I have voltage, and I have resistance. I have voltage, and I have resistance. I can use Ohm's law for each branch and say, what's the current? So I can solve for the current in each particular branch. I'm just going to go ahead and real quick that means that the current is 1.8 here, and it means that it is 1.8 there. The reason why it's the same is because I have the same resistor values. It doesn't always have to be the same. But one of the things that's interesting is, I'm going to erase for just a second. I have 1.8 amps flowing in this circuit, and I have 1.8 amps flowing in this circuit. Now the question that a lot of times you'll be asked is, what is the total current? or what is the current here or at the other end of the battery? What's the total current that you see? Well, what happens is you have a total current, and then what happens when you have the total current? Remember, you think of current like water in a pipe. Well, if you have a split in the pipe, some of the water goes that way and some of the water goes this way. And then it comes back and it's recombined and you have the original value again. So what you can say is if I can measure the water in this pipe and I can measure the water in this pipe, together they have to add together to be what the original value was. So the total current in this case would be 3.6 amps. Now a parallel collection, just as a reminder, is useful because when one resistor goes out, the other stay on. That's why you see things like switches and outlets wired in parallel. Okay, it's very useful for that particular reason. The voltage stays the same. The current can be different in each parallel branch. Whereas a resistor, when resistors are wired in series, 
the current is the same and the voltage can change, when resistors are wired in parallel, the voltage is the same and the current can change.